Check the description for the following discount codes. This is just like a conversation piece video. I was having a chat with Bob from Race at Home about tactile feedback from vertical actuators. Um, PT actuator versus D-Box. And then in my head, of course, tactile transducers versus vertical actuators for tactile feedback. Bob was saying, you know, something that come up in, in his group of sort of conversations that he has with customers and, and other people in his WhatsApp group, sorry. Um, and, and some people were saying that PT actuator or actuators that can, you know, travel a long way are only really good for things like dirt rally, where there's lots of jumps and, and massive bumps and crashes and you're being thrown around a lot. And they're not good for subtle tactile feedback, you know, like the texture of the road, curbs, rumble strips, things like this. And we were chatting about it. And I said to Bob, I said, you know what, I'll put a, a video up just chatting about this because I've had a tactile transducer set up four transducers, one replicating each wheel. And I've had, you know, um, that basic two DOF motion platform um, from DOF Reality, the M2. And now I've got four upright actuators, the PT Actuator Scorpions from Bob. Uh, and so I've got a little bit of experience sort of across all. Oh, and the, um, the idea that vertical actuators are no good for small detail is basically complete rubbish. Um, when, when we talk about tactile feedback, so vibrations, lumps and bumps, road texture, things like that, we use tactile transducers either individually, you know, one for each wheel, perhaps one under your seat, one under your pedals. Most wheel bases will give some form of tactile feedback as well. They are, for want of a simplified description, speakers vibrating at particular frequencies to replicate what in real life would be vertical movement. A bump in the road, a pothole, um, stony gravelly texture, a curb, a rumble strip. If you think about what that does in real life, that actually moves the wheel of our vehicle, whatever it might be, up and down. If it's a big pothole, the wheel falls down into it, you get quite a thump, the car tilts to the left. If you smack into a raised curb, your wheel is gonna be pushed upwards, pushing you upwards in your car as a result, and then everything in between will be much more subtle, little lumps and bumps, you know, gravelly, uneven textures and, and what have you. So when we talk about tactile feedback, it's replicating, literally trying to replicate using vibrations, vertical movement. So if you've got a set of four actuators, whether they're PT actuator, whether they're D-Box, whether they're whatever they are, these actuators are super fast as far as response goes. I can't remember, I should have looked at the spec on these, but it's something stupid like 200 mil a second. Like getting on for, you know, three quarters of a foot, it can move in, in one second. So moving up and down to replicate your tire which is like whatever, you know, 15 inch wheel, 17 inch wheel, rolling over a lump or a bump or a curb or a cattle grid in dirt rally. And them actuators vibrating accordingly, you know, based off the telemetry coming out of the sim, it's not a difficult task for them at all. Now, yes, they can throw you, you know, up to 250 mil in the air, should you be doing a big jump in dirt rally, you know, and when you hit the ground, they can compress as well but they're just as happy only moving a little bit replicating what your suspension is doing in in a real life car based on the road texture that you're driving over as i say whether it's a cattle grid whether it's a curb a rumble strip just an uneven surface you know their response times are super fun the, these scorpion ones i think can actually pull was it 2g in acceleration because of how fast they can move over their distance of travel. So whilst they, you know, 20 centimetres, whilst it's reasonable, um, or 250, 20 centimetres, yeah, or 250, I'm going for centimetres to mil. 200 mil or 250 mil, or if you buy the really short ones, 150 mil of travel. So whilst that's like, let's say 250 mil is like almost a foot, whilst that isn't a massive distance, 
the speed that they can move at can actually accelerate you, or up as it would be, to up to 2G, if memory serves me correctly. That shows you how fast they can move. So yeah, just, you know, this is just a very quick video sharing my experiences here. I no longer run tactile transducers on my rig. The moment I got my vertical actuators and got them all set up and, and dialed in nicely, it was instantly obvious there's no need now to have tactile transducers. Yes, if you want to add them in addition, you can, but there's absolutely no need. If you've got your actuators set up correctly, they are literally replicating one-to-one -one what you would be feeling in real life as you go over different surfaces, textures, lumps, bumps, curves, etc. So my, I've got a whole set of four, you know, act, uh, transducers just sat there doing nothing now um, because I've got no, no need for them. You, you know, the best way to replicate vertical movement, i.e. road textures, lumps and bumps, is to have something that vertically moves you so you feel like you've just gone over that curb or fallen into that pothole or whatever it might be. That's far better than the rig being static and you're just getting a little vibration. Now don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan of tactile transducers and I would choose them first over a lot of other upgrades um, you know, based on your budget. Because if you don't have vertical actuators, having physical feedback about road texture is just, it's just great. It takes you to a whole other world of immersion. You'll really feel like you're driving down the road, like dirt razor goes up, I'm gonna have lumps and bumps, even though I'm not moving up and down like this, the whole rig is vibrating and it feels like you are. So tactile transducers are brilliant and if you haven't got them, you should get some. But vertical actuators like these, or D-Box or whatever, do a perfect job of replicating detail in the road texture that you are driving over. And as I say, for me, I've got no reason to put tactile transducers back on the rig, because if I want to feel a big thud when I, when I land the jump in Dirt Rally, guess what happens? My rig's lifted me up as I took off, and then when I come down, it slams me into the floor. It shakes the whole room in actual fact, you know? So there's no need to have a, I don't know, four inch tactile transducer on each corner and one of them I see that goes, that vibrates, and I say a little bit, compared to being actually smashed into the ground, they only vibrate a little bit. There's no reason to do that. Um, you know, as I say, if you want to add extra sort of special effects in, then you can, but when you've got a rig that's already doing exactly what you'd be doing on that surface, on that stage, on that circuit in real life, you don't have to. So that's my experience with vertical actuators, you know, um, and I've, I've used D-Box ones as well as PT actuator, um, and obviously I had tactile transducers as well. So my experience going from all of those, for all of those, is the vertical actuators do a brilliant job of replicating road detail. Whether it's PT actuator ones or whether it's D-Box ones, they, they both do an excellent job because for the spec of them, how fast they can move, they really don't have to move that fast in use. You're never driving over a surface that requires like, how can I describe this? To, to even push them actuators to move anywhere near their maximum speed, it would need to be like a high frequency change of surface. So like a cattle grid, for example, with really, really fine um, like grid pattern on it. So it's like, as you're going across really, really fast, but like way quicker even than what I'm sort of illustrating there. And, and even then, those actuators would have no trouble just moving my rig up and down at the, the desired speed. So yeah, I just thought, I said to Bob, I'll throw a quick talking head video together about this because clearly people in his community within his WhatsApp group, the Peter Actuator group, are chatting about it. And I thought, well, I've got experience with this, you know, and can compare one to the other and to tactile transducers as well and, and just do, you know, give a little explanation of the reason why vertical actuators work perfectly for replicating road texture and detail, you know, that that we want because they're literally doing one-to-one -one what your suspension, your wheels and your tyres would do in real life. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and as always, take it easy.